My thanks to charleslouis.co.uk, Chartered Mortgage Advisors, for their support in this video. At the beginning of all this, you actually had COVID-19, didn't you? How was that? How badly were you affected? Well, it was strange, back before Easter, I think it was end of March when all this kicked in, I'd gone to do a, a Q&A with Norman Whiteside at Altrincham Football Club with about 170 people. And um, it was good. And we, we were there all night and, uh, at Altrincham. And you, you, as, you, as you know, in going to these events, you shake hands with that many people. And people want photographs of you and a big Norman Whiteside next year. And, uh, you know, that went well. And then the next following night, I, I did a, on behalf of the club, Susanna Heed said, would you come to... If you want to go to the Palace Hotel with Mike Summerby and his wife, you can take a friend and it's, it's all raising money for Christie's. So I did that on behalf of the club and there again you meet people and it's a good night. But the first thing in my life, Ian, I'd lost my key to my house. <laughs> I'd left it in a raincoat. I got in a taxi from my house to go to this event at the Palace and the uh, first time in my life I've lost my house key. So I get back home with a friend of mine called Simon who lives in the moor and... Um, I'm stood outside my house, rang my sister at 12 o'clock. She got a Polish guy to come out to my house, drill a hole in my door and give me a new lock to get in my house. <laughs> and it cost me about 160 quid. It wasn't cheap, Ian, but I got three spare keys and I got a new lock for my front door. <laughs> and then what happened after that, I just, I don't know what it was, but it was meeting people for two nights, running so many people. And then I just, it was like, the, all I can describe it is the worst case of flu ever I'd, I'd, um, I couldn't taste my food I'd lost my appetite um, I was getting tired wheezy coming down the stairs just walking down the stairs um, feeling hot all the time my temper I got, I got a temperature gauge my, my, my temperature was 36 so it wasn't over the top but I had these bad headaches and then uh, I just went from bad to worse and I knew the, the big thing at night in getting into bed I'd wake up an hour later and I was soaking wet, like somebody had literally thrown a bucket of water over me. And I'd take this T-shirt off, throw it down the stairs, as you do, and it was like three times a weight I put when I put it on. And then it was like coming out of a sauna, you know, in the main road days, getting in the sauna with the lads and coming out. My shirt was soaking wet. I'd throw it down the stairs, I'd put a, new, a clean T-shirt on, get on the other side of the bed where it was dry. And I did this for five nights and, I kept getting, I've got a set of scales in my bathroom, like most people have, and I, I just weighed myself, and it was going like from 13, 12, and, ev and every day I was losing pounds, and eventually I got down to 13, 2, and I thought, Christ, I've lost all this weight in a week, and I was feeling li lifeless, and I just thought, I've got to ring 111, they tell you to call, or the hospital, and they said, oh, look, ring your local GP, and I got through, thankfully, to my local GP here in Stockport, and um, the doctor said, stay on the phone. He said, I think you've had it. I think you, you've got it. He says, and uh, what we don't want to happen is to get um, a secondary infection on your lungs. Because I was thinking, oh, don't send me to hospital, please. And uh, he said, send someone down to the doctors today and get pick these antibiotics up. And I went down, uh, you know, sent somebody down, assistant. She got these antibiotics. And um, within four days, I could tell a big difference. It just kick-started my immune system, whatever it did, Ian. I felt, thank God, I felt great four or five days later. My appetite came back. I started eating and um, I saw the back of it, thank you. But, you know, it was a horrendous uh, feeling to feel so low, you know, lose all that weight. Well, thank goodness you're all right. I mean, how did you feel then when football came back, given what you'd been through? Were you oh. glad it was back to give you a boost or were you disappointed that, you know, it, it was behind closed doors again? I think like most people, we needed something to cling on to with having no sport at all on television. And I thought, bring back, let's get rid of the season. We know Liverpool with so many points clear than City. And, you know, let's just play these games. Uh, it, I know it was, it, it was frightening for the players. It must have been to have all these tests. But they have got the best professionals in the world these days at football clubs, as we know, Ian. And um, I just thought, let, let, let's do it. Let's get this season over because the way it's going, it's going to, you know, mess everything up and who, knew, who, who would know when the new season would start next season. But I was all free because I think people needed a lift, you know, to what some sort of sport, whether it wasn't football, it was rugby, golf, Formula One, anything, just to have something to watch on television again. And uh, I could really realise what the players must have been going through because they've got young families. They wouldn't want to catch it because 
it is scary. It is really scary. When I had it, I thought, I thought, what's going to happen to me? You know, I started losing so much weight in a week, and I was, and, and then what happened? It really took me six, eight weeks in to get my strength back. Two months at least, because I've got a bike now, and I like to go cycling. And I went out the house, and I was even tired after doing one mile up the road. I got off the bike. I couldn't do it anymore. I had five layers of clothes on. It was a particularly cold. It was cold day. It was a bit windy. And I, I thought, I've got to get off. I can't cycle anymore. And it really affected my, my, my immune system and my strength. It does sap you of all your energy. And it does take two or three months, I think, for anybody to get over this illness, if they've had it. On to the football. I mean, uh, what have you made of City then behind, you know, in this artificial situation? And, and looking further ahead, obviously, Pep is saying that the FA Cup and the uh, Champions League are now the priority. Do you think City, the way that they're playing at the moment, does it suit them? And, and could they win one of those those tournaments or even both? Yeah, I think we started well in when we come back to it. We, we had some great results and um, certainly the one that capitalised it all was Liverpool result at home was a wonderful result. And then we go and lose at Southampton. But I just think um, we've got to keep upbeat because we, we've started back again and we, we, we're still in, we, we can still win the treble. As you say, we won the League Cup, the Capital One Cup. Uh, it's still in the semi-final of the FA Cup and the Champions League. And I think we do know, uh, I think you've watched all the games over the years. and I, I just think the defence is, you know, we, we've not been 100% in the back. If we'd have had Liverpool's defence, for example, I think we'd have been running for everything. I just And they always say, you know, start at the back, we've got a great goalkeeper. But we've not had that, in, that consistency at the back um, going forward. And, you know... You know, I work with Tommy Booth and Big Joe on match days at City. And Tommy, every day, every week, you speak to Tommy Booth about Otamendi and one or two others. And, you know, he put, he's like pulling his hair out with what hair he's got left. But uh, Tommy goes mad at Otamendi. And, you know, I just think sometimes he's a rush of blood and he dives in. And I just think Pep, Pep realises now what we need to do. We need, when we've got the ball, Ian, and we play, the, we play well, we're the best team in the country, one of the best teams in Europe. When we've got possession of the ball, it's when we haven't got the ball. I'm sure you know. Um, we 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 we're not the best defensively, getting back and, and marking people and getting tight on people. But do you think City, with this defence, because it's not going to be changed before the Champions League, can actually win the top European honour, the Champions League? It's a tough ask, Ian. If you're asking me bluntly, um, you know, Bayern Munich are a good side. One or two other teams are good sides, but. On the day, as you know, we, you need a bit of luck. And it is on the day. I, th I think we can go anywhere. If we're up for it, we can we can beat anybody on the day. Of course, we're going to miss Sergio. He's a magnificent player. Uh, I, I, I don't know when he's going to return, but, you know, we're going to miss Aguero. Um, but the way we're playing, with the, once we have the ball in the top third with the players we've got, um, we can beat anybody on the day. It's just whether we're going to be consistent at the back the back four, and uh, I know Pep. You know he's making changes all the time. If it's not if it's not Mendy, it's Shevchenko playing left back, who's got good feet, he's got good balance. But him at times, you know, he switches off, and he, he it's difficult. He makes the wrong decision defensively. And you've got Walker who's come back okay, but then he can have a concentration lapse and switch off. And if you've got too many of them doing that, Ian, you're not going to be consistent at the back. Um, Mendy. You know, he's done all right. He put some good crosses in lately. And I just think also Mendy, you know, whoever working with these people, they've got to really work on the defensive ability. They're, good going, they're all good going forward on the ball and comfortable. But it's defensive qualities you need to stop the opposition coming in. And you, we, as you say, when you play against good sides like Bayern Munich and uh, Real Madrid next game, and, you know, it's going to get tougher as we go on. And um, you've got to be with it at the back. My thanks to Hot Click Marketing, who are specialists in online marketing. See the number and the website on the advert. Thanks for your continued support.